again. Piper wants to say hi. Piper. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um anyway. Yeah, so I have been spending a lot of time out in the bend area between work. I'm working out in Salem, but it's only like once a week. So when I'm not working, I've been chilling out in Bend, because why not? So as a solo female traveler, I thought it would be beneficial if I shared um, kind of like some safety tips on how I not only stay safe, but feel safe while traveling on the road solo. So there are a couple things that I take into consideration when I'm looking for a camp spot for the night. Um, I think what it comes down to is just like knowing where you feel most comfortable. I tend to gravitate towards more desert climate. Um, and places with higher elevation. I think that's just because like I like to be in an area that's a little bit more open versus densely wooded areas. I would rather be able to kind of see um, further out in my surroundings and be able to see if something's approaching whether it be an animal or a person. Um, that way I have a little bit more time to react versus when I'm in a densely wooded area. <laughs> like if something's sneaking up on you you're not going to see it until it's right there and it's kind of too late. So yeah I tend to look for um, camp spots that are either like really high elevation kind of overlooking so you can kind of um, not only see out and around you but you're kind of up above everything um, yeah or you know a place by a lake or a river some sort of body of water um, because typically if there's a body of water I'll know that there's gonna be a clearing in that area as well I love trees and I love to be able to set up my hammock but I like when the trees are a little bit more spaced out versus when they're like super close together and you can't see anything and then you're chilling by the campfire at night like wondering what's out there and yeah anyway so that's just something that i've noticed that helps me feel a little bit safer i also look for spots that have reception and service just because i feel like it's a little bit safer um for me to be able to get a hold of people if something does go wrong um that's not always the case sometimes i am camping in an area where I don't have reception. Every time I drive somewhere, I make sure to kind of take like a mental note of the um, like closest area with service. That way, if I do get into a situation, I know how far I have to either drive back or walk back before I get reception. Another safety tip, I always try and arrive, well not try, I always <laughs> arrive to my camp spot um, before dark. Um, I don't want to have to drive around looking for a place to park in the dark in the middle of the night. I want to be able to arrive in the daytime, kind of get an idea for my surroundings. Typically when I get to, I'll find like a forestry road or BLM land to camp at. I like to drive around for quite a while and explore like all the little side roads and whatnot before I decide where I want to park. That way I kind of know the terrain, I know the area, I know if there's other people camping nearby. Um, so yeah, that's why I like to arrive during the daytime so I can just get a really good idea of my environment um, before the nighttime because I feel like the night times when I get sketched out during the day like I feel totally fine and pretty safe um, but nighttime sometimes I get the heebie-jeebies every now and then not gonna lie. <laughs> Honestly, another small thing is like listening to your pets. Um, I know I have cats and not dogs and like a dog would be <laughs> a lot safer, but still I feel like animals kind of pick up on certain vibes. And so if my cats are freaking out for some reason, I'll kind of take that as a sign of like, maybe there's something unsafe in this area. Yeah, if they're freaking out and seem kind of skittish and sketched out, then I'll kind of trust that and move to the next spot. I think honestly, it just comes down to being prepared. Um, when you're heading out to a campsite, you know, like I said, noting the place with the nearest service, also keeping an eye out for the closest gas station, closest grocery store, um, closest hospital or um, vet clinic, just kind of taking note of your surroundings and being very aware um, of your environment. You know, even little things like where the nearest restroom is, if you're going to be kind of more like city camping or where the nearest fill station is in case you run out of water. And then along the same lines of staying, pre pre ugh, staying prepared, um, I always make sure that I'm like 
fairly ready to leave, I like to, you know, kind of like unpack a little bit and let myself kind of get settled in and set up camp for the most part. But I do like to be not super set up that way if for some reason something were to go wrong and I needed to leave really quickly in the middle of the night I wouldn't have to worry about like packing up all of my stuff um, I would be able to just start my car and drive off um, so yeah that's why I parked the way that I, that I did I backed in towards this little dead end area that way a my back door is like not exposed um, to people not that I think many people will be driving by here, but, and then also so that if I were need to leave, were needing to leave in the middle of the night, I wouldn't have to back out of my spot. I would be able to just pull forward and drive away um, as quickly as possible. And that's also why the pass-through door is really nice because if I'm, you know, sleeping in the back of the truck and I need to get to the cab, I can, I don't have to go outside of the vehicle. I can literally go from my bedroom into, um, yeah, into the driver's seat. For tonight's camp spot, got a decent amount of trees around me, but I'm still in a pretty open space, which makes me feel nice and safe because I this is where the uh, road is, so if people were to drive in, this would where, be where they would be coming from, so I'd be able to see them ahead of time. I've got my private little fire pit. And then back here, it's just like a dead end, so no one will be able to sneak up from behind, which is nice. And now I can like open my back door and have a private little back deck. And I totally lucked out because I forgot firewood, but there's like already some wood here and a bunch of other like branches and dry pieces of wood that I can gather up to have a little, little fire tonight. I'm not gonna lie, being alone in the woods used to kind of sketch me out, and when I decided that I wanted to pursue van life, even before I bought the van, I kind of like worked on preparing myself to be more comfortable in nature by myself and just kind of trained myself to be a little bit more prepared and aware. Um, just by doing like day trips and solo hikes and at first it was really uncomfortable like I felt weird hiking by myself and I would notice like a lot of other females who were hiking by themselves would have like dogs and stuff and I was like well I've just got my cat but okay and I'm not gonna bring my cat hiking um so for a while like it did kind of make me uncomfortable um but then I just kept yeah like doing like hikes that were close to town or had service and then I just kind of like push myself a little bit more out of my comfort zone each time um that way when I built out the vehicle and it was time for me to hit the road I was pretty used to being um out in nature by myself I also always make sure that someone knows where I am I usually send at least two to three people um the location so I'll send them like the coordinates of the spot that I plan on heading to and then if I decide to head to a different spot I'll send them the updated coordinates. Um, usually I'll try and give people like an ETA of when I plan to get there. But yeah it's just nice to have like two or three people know where you are, how long you plan on being there, you know that way like if they don't hear from you in five days they're like well she said she'd be back you know three days ago. Those are just like my simple little safety tips. Know where you feel most comfortable. I mean if you feel more comfortable in a really thick forest where no one can see you from the road or driving by, then do that. For me, that makes me feel less space. I like to be able to look out and see my surroundings. It's just a matter of being aware of your surroundings, being prepared, and knowing what makes you feel safest. Honestly, this is a pretty ideal location because I've got trees, but I'm out in the open. Um, I have reception. I'm maybe five minutes outside of town. Um, yeah, and so those are kind of like my favorite spots where you feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere, but in reality, you're right outside of civilization. Um, as far as like camping where there's people nearby or not nearby, I tend to prefer to be kind of like further away from people. Um, but if there's like, if it's a pretty big forestry area, um, I don't mind if there's other campers like further down. I will typically just drive out until I'm like out of eyesight of other campers. Um, unless they seem super chill. And then like I'll walk over with a bottle of wine and hopefully make new friends. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time.
What you doing, buddy? So on the subject of uh, <laughs> solo camping and safety, definitely keeping my bear spray really close to me at all times today. Um, there is like this dude wandering through the woods with a pickaxe. Will honestly sketch me out like. I know animals are dangerous too, but animals are at least predictable, you know, like you can study and know how to react if you were to run into like a mountain lion or a bear. People, you have no idea what the safest way to react is because like everyone's different and some people are super sketch, so yeah, I don't know. I'll keep my eye out and if I feel uncomfortable, I'll just leave, but so I ended up packing up and leaving camp um in reality i'm probably fine like who knows he had like a pickaxe and a rifle so he was probably either like gathering firewood or maybe just like going out to find somewhere to shoot but i like to just kind of trust my intu intuition on situations like that and it would have been one thing if he like just walked by <laughs> but he was definitely kind of like lurking around the campsite for a while and kind of just like yeah creeping in the distance and then he saw me like notice him and like skirt it off and I was like yeah I don't know that just kind of makes me slightly uncomfortable because it's like now he's seen me he knows that I'm out here alone just chilling with my cats you know um it's not like I'm the most intimidating looking person um yeah, even having like a way to defend myself, it's still, I don't want to have to put myself in a situation where that's a necessary response. Um, and so, yeah, I figured I'd just trust my gut on this one and something seemed a little bit off and there's plenty of other places to camp. So also like, I want to be able to relax and not be looking over my shoulder all day. So I was like, yeah, you know what, I'm just gonna, gonna go chill somewhere else where I don't feel like slightly on edge. <laughs>